Welcome back, travelers, and today we're going to be going over Django Wexler's The Gathering Storm. This is chapter six. One thing that I like, this one opens up with Rao on the skyship. And the idea that the, the multiverse as a whole is progressing is really cool to me. Because they talk, he talks about how there used to not be that many skyships. And that means that like there's, there's progress happening. Kaladesh has skyships all over the place because they're already super advanced. Dominaria is regaining skyships and rebuilding them after they've uh, basically in their in their new golden age I'd say since there's no no explosions happening everywhere the biggest threat was a was a demon lord who was basically just taking credit for everything else everybody else was doing in the past so I mean everything is like going towards something which I thought was pretty cool is that there's there's a sense that when we leave Ravnica Ravnica keeps moving without us so that that's nice that's nice I like that but anyways back to the story Ralzarek is basically meeting up with Lavinia again because Lavinia if, did her research on Vraska at the same time Raul is trying to share his information with her they're communicating with each other what's cool is that Vraska since she's the, the topic of their their like their conversation you get this new insight not so much new insight more clarity you get more of an explanation as to what happened exactly with Vraska the only time she's ever been open with anyone was when she was with Jace and we had our, the stories with there where she talks about how she was imprisoned by them and the Azorius dealt with her and also the stuff. But in this chapter, you get to see things from Lavinia's perspective when she's explaining things the way they're written down to Ral, which is really cool because Vraska's not very open. She's not going to talk to Ral and tell him, hey, I was imprisoned, I was wrongfully imprisoned, I was wrongfully abused, all that stuff. And you have, uh, what were they called, the Purges? They were called the Dusk End Purges, which was basically like the Azorius, they invaded the Golgari like areas, they just took everyone in and like imprisoned them, and then they tortured them basically. And Vraska is set there as having just disappeared. And this kind of actually gives some credence to the plot hole. There's a plot hole that the Sisters of Stone Death, who were the Golgari guild masters at the beginning of the Ravnica sets, the, the first Ravnica block, that they were the last surviving Gorgons on Ravnica. But because of the Dusk End uh, purges, it makes sense that if there were any Gorgons left, that they would be hiding. The Sisters of Stone Death were only the ones known. Every, all the other Gorgons were either off plane like Vraska, or just in hiding, trying to avoid getting slaughtered, persecuted, because they were hated. They're, they're like enemy number one because of the fact that they're literally able to turn people to stone with a gaze they don't even need a weapon so this that the whole idea behind that I found really interesting that they gave it like a name the dusk end purges it gives it the sense of like a historical event that Vraska was wrongfully accused of Esperia was her judge so obviously that like it puts them directly at odds with each other Esperia represents all the Azorius in a, both a good way for everybody that's not Vraska but she represents the Azor with everything that's wrong with the Azorius as well because she was prejudiced so that's really cool. Raul mentions the Selesnian thing that happened, of course, how Garo was controlled by Bolas. They don't really understand how Bolas could have gotten that close to Garo to have completely hijacked his mind, which is something that only an extremely powerful mind mage or somebody who has some kind of connection could do. They're saying maybe the Demir helped. So that was really interesting that they, they mentioned that and they try to like toss around some theories real quick about that. So Raul goes to meet Vraska. Vraska's on this thing called the Madman's Bridge. And what's really cool is that the Madman's Bridge is not mentioned anywhere in Magic. So Raul goes to meet Vraska on a thing called the Madman's Bridge. And the Madman's Bridge kind of, this, this little moment, a, a vignette, kind of gives you an idea of how things work on Ravnica. The Madman's Bridge is this, basically the structure that was designed by the Azorius and built and all this stuff. It's supposed to be really cool because apparently there's a giant split in the earth and there's literally houses like scaffolded on the sides trying to get as much real estate as possible but there's this bridge that's supposed to bridge the gap it's called the madman's bridge the reason it's called such is because that area has a lot of tectonic differences subterranean tremors and such that result in it basically having to um uh, having like twisted and broken when they were uh when they opened it on the day of their opening which was really it's really funny because it's just kind of this this thing and that's how it is with a, with a big city. Big cities have little little mini monuments, mini events that happen that kind of just get pushed away by the grander events. If you're just kind of looking at it from a like, a, like if you go to San Antonio, San Antonio's got all sorts of little 
little nooks and things to look at because there's it was it's just so full of history if you go to a european uh city there's stuff all over the place because there's just things that have happened so over so much time things have happened everywhere basically madman's bridge is technically serviceable you can technically go on it but there's the fact that it could fall at any time so Raul is there, Hakara is there, Vraska is there, and of course the best bug man, Zadek is there. And they have their little like parlay. And they, um, Vraska decides, okay, yeah, we're going to work together. I know you don't trust me, but I need to stop Bolas because I'm the, I'm the one who helped him. I did help him, I'm here to stop him now. And so they kind of join forces. After that meeting, Raul goes back to uh, back to his office, and there's this messenger there. The messenger gives him a letter. The letter is not magical, has no wards, has no protections, has no amplifications, nothing like that. It's just very quickly written, and it's by Tomek, and it says, I need to see you. It's guild kill business. So Raul sees that. He's like, oh, snip, snap. I got to go see Tomek. And so he gets on this in a rickshaw that's pulled by a centaur, which is kind of hilarious. And the centaur takes him all the way to, the, uh, to his apartment. So he gets out of the taxi basically, he pays the guy, he gets it, goes up, runs up the stairs, he calms down, he goes inside. When he goes inside, Tomek is basically super frazzled, he's really confused, he doesn't really know what to do. He sees him and he's like, oh, uh, 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 mm, mm. And so, Raul's like, calm down, let's talk about what you want to talk about, what's, what's going on? Tomek is great because he's like, well, we have a really good relationship, like very good, and I don't want to mess that up, and I'm pretty sure I'm about to mess that up, and Raul's like, you're about to mess that up. And it, it, it's like, it shows Raul's, like, his passion and his, like, just his devotion. Because he's like, no, you're not going to mess it up. I don't even know what you're going to say, but it's, you're, you're fine. You can say whatever you need to say to me. And it's, it's really nice to see that, like, it's like a healthy relationship between Tomek and Raul. Tomek is like, I really need a favor. I need you to attack the Orzov. And Raul's like, huh. You need me to attack and the Orzov. You need me to attack an entire guild. And so they kind of start talking about how the Orzov have, have a lot of defenses. Raul can't, is trying to like unite everyone, so attacking the guild isn't going to do that. He can start a guild war. Doesn't really want to do that. That's a bad idea when you're trying to unite them. I like how once Tomek tells Raul, he's able to calm down. Raul gives him a hug and all that. And it says that they drink out of matching tea mugs. And I just like to imagine that Raul has a red mug with blue letters to say his. And then Tomek has a white mug with black letters that says his. <laughs> and they're both just like, clink, and they drink out of their mugs. It, it's, the, it's the funniest image I have. Maybe even with like the guild symbol on the back of their, of their mugs, just to show that, like where they're from. It's great. I love it. So Raul is basically informed by Tomek all about the Kaya side of the story. How Kaya's supposed to kill the Obstat and everything's supposed to go down like that. So, like I was saying, it's all about deals with the black and black and white Orzov. And the deal is, if Raul helps, then they're going to join the guild. They're going to jo join the guild summit, I mean. And so, basically, Raul's like, I can't do it, but I know someone who can. So, after that, Raul meets up with Vraska and Kaya, and three of them, oh, and Hikara's there, of course Hikara's there. And we have another ghost assassin pun of, is she a ghost that's an assassin, or an assassin that's a ghost? And then Kaya's like, well, I could be a ghost that's an assassin of ghosts. And Hikara's like, oh my gosh, yes! <laughs> And she's really excited about that, of course, because it's Akara. But, basically, the three of them, they decide, okay, Raul's going to orchestrate, Kaya's going to execute, and Vraska's the one that's going to get Ulthical Gari to actually attack the Orzov. There's going to be a clash between them, and there's going to be a war little mini battle, and then once everything is cleared, Kaya will have killed the Obsidat, the diversion will be over, and bada-bing, bada-boom, the Orzov will no longer have the Obsidat as a leader. Apparently they're supposed to have Taysa, but I guess we'll see how that goes. But what's really cool is that Raul's like, Vraska, I need you to attack the Orzov. She's like, deal! <laughs> like, she, she was just like, yeah, we'll do it. And he's like, but what about, like, she goes, nope, you convinced me, you don't need to say anything else, I'm not gonna change my mind, you got me, I'm good, we're good, we're awesome. And he's like, okay, sure. And that's basically how this particular thing goes down. And Hikara, of course, is super fascinated by Kaya because it's Kaya. And I, I just found this whole, this thing, it, it progressed relatively well. The characters, they are, it makes sense the way that they're connecting right now and how they're building up towards where they are at the beginning of War of the Spark. You have Lavinia, who's meeting up with Rosrak every now and then. 
very quickly, like kind of dropping off information. Vraska just joined them. Hikar has been ghosting, uh, shadowing, not ghosting. Hikar <laughs> uh, has been shadowing Ral. All these characters are connected, and it's really cool to see how their little, their little, like, their breakfast club is forming. And I love that. It's great. This is great. I love it. And I can't wait for chapter seven. But until then, please leave a like, comment, whatever, all that stuff. Share this with your friends. And until all of that happens, I will see you guys in the next video. Travel well.